Tonight on The Roast, more infighting in the Labor Party, podcasters are sued over a patent dispute, and Bob Carr admits he doesn't actually write his own blog. You know what else I found out? His name's not really Bob, it's Robert. And he's not even a car, he's a man! As this adorable website keeps reminding me, it's now just 100 days until the federal election. And former Prime Minister and renowned team player Kevin Rudd has called for calm in the Labor Party. Because according to some Labor MPs, they're losing votes like that website's losing seconds. One MP even compared the party's prospects of winning to those of a sinking ship, saying, it's like the Titanic, we're in the final scenes. Which is weird, because unlike the Labor Party, that movie was incredibly successful. And keeping up with the movie references, Labor MP Graham Perrett said yesterday that the party is in more trouble than Indiana Jones, which again is another great movie. Oh, unless he meant the fourth one. But even then, I don't remember the part in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull where two Labor MPs packed up their offices 100 days before anything happened. And Labor's not just falling apart, Joel Fitzgibbon is turning on it like he's in the season finale of a soap opera. This week on Labor, Joel stabs his boss in the back. And are you still going to go to the election with this Prime Minister? Hang on, Koshy, I just brought, I brought the manual with me, I'll see what it says. It says I should say, Polls come and go, but the only poll that matters is on election day. <laughs> Labor. Oh, he is such a bitch. Unless that's his evil twin brother. No, he went to Spain. Well, Nick Richardson's currently at the Labor Party offices. Nick, what's the mood like down there? It's depressing, Tom. I think they've given up. I'm here trying to get them to keep it together and stop all the infighting, but... Hey, Bowen, keep it together when you're talking to the media. And always use the manual. But don't <laughs> reference the manual. Okay? Chin up, buddy. Nick, what's been the reaction to Joel Fitzgibbons' backhanded comments about the latest opinion polls? Oh my god, I forgot about the opinion polls. Tom, I've spent all week trying to convince Wayne Swan that he might still win his seat, though he probably won't. <laughs> oh my god, he heard me. Tom, have you ever seen a grown treasurer eat six litres of chunky monkey chocolate ice cream while sobbing his way through Runaway Bride? Because I have, and Swanee's not even using a spoon anymore. Okay, give me the opinion polls. What?! I didn't even know numbers could get this small. Yeah, they can get even smaller. Well, did Fitzgibbon at least follow the media manual? Please tell me Fitzgibbon followed the media manual. Um, why don't you see for yourself? It says I should say, polls come and go, but the only poll that matters is on election day. <laughs> oh, you piece of shit. Tom, these talking point manuals are like genitals. We all have them, but you don't whip them out on television. You know what the first rule of the manual is? Don't talk about the manual. Oh, f off, Tom. That's rule two. Rule one is keep the party together. This place is falling apart. It's like they're not even trying anymore. Did you know the junior staffers are having a daily fight to hurt each other to see if they could still feel something? Stop <laughs> fighting! <laughs> what? Is this Fitzgibbon? Yeah? Shut up! You're only making it worse! I've just learnt there are smaller numbers. Alright, well, we'll leave it there and... Stop fighting! Well, next up tonight, and during yesterday's Senate estimates hearing, Foreign Affairs Minister Bob Carr somehow found himself admitting that he doesn't actually write his own blog, Thought Lines. And since the Hansard transcript hasn't been published yet, we couldn't read how the hell Bob Carr actually ended up talking about his blog in a Senate estimates hearing. But it certainly highlights the differences between US and Australian politics. Over there, a Senate hearing involves things like this. I think that ultimately with your leaving, you accept the culpability for the worst tragedy since 9-11. Whereas in Australia, it's, Senator Carr, do you write your own blog? <laughs> to be fair, the answer was surprising because Mr Carr admitted that since he became foreign minister, these days it's all done by his ghostwriter. He's a ghost and he writes to us. Ghostwriter. Which does at least explain all those posts written in the third person, like... Forbes magazine called Bob Carr a dragon slayer because usually referring to yourself in the third person is something reserved for rappers and Hodor. Hodor? But Senator Carr admitted even the posts written in the first person aren't his, which means when I read a post like... I walked to the gate of Qantas Flight 107 talking on the phone to Janelle. I'm now wondering who the f*** was talking to Janelle? His ghostwriter? 
And when he writes, Jet lag fells me, I sleep like the dead, until 2am. I have to imagine that Bob Carr was sound asleep while someone stood over him posting to WordPress. Presumably his ghostwriter. <laughs> and not only that, Bob Carr admits, Not only do I not write it, I don't read it. So if he's not reading his blog, who is? Jazz Twemlow! Yep, it's Jazz Twemlow. Jazz, how are you taking the news? Oh, I don't know what to think anymore, Tom. Bobcarblog.wordpress.com was my one-stop shop for culture with a personal touch. His blog had everything, not to mention hands down the best communist nostalgia and the romance of the Cold War section I've seen on any WordPress site. But as foreign minister, don't you think his blog should be a little more focused on his work? No, he's got his own official .gov website that no one ever reads for that. This is his personal blog, Tom. A blog which has now been ruined to the point where the very person it's about doesn't even want to read about their own life, as written by a team of ghosts. And I don't blame him. Look at this stuff. Boring. Bring back the old Bob Carr blog. It was charming. It had photos of Bob in a truck, Bob playing hide and seek, and Bob in the Bob Five. But now Bob Carr is working as foreign minister, he never has any time to properly maintain bobcarblog.wordpress.com, which leaves fans like myself only one option. Find another blog being written by a 65-year-old politician. No, get Carr fired. Then he'll have no choice but to go back to his old blogging ways. The fans need to unite on September 14th and vote against him. OK, well, thank you, Jazz. And help save bobcarblog.wordpress.com by visiting my website, savebobcarblog.wordpress.com, .blogspot.com. And finally tonight, a US company that claims to have invented podcasting is now suing media giants like CBS and NBC for infringing its intellectual property. The company, called Personal Audio, is relying on a patent it filed back in 1996 for a novel mechanism for automatically identifying and retrieving media files representing episodes in a series as those episodes became available. I can see why they changed the name to podcast. But if you can patent something just with a sentence that in no way explains how the thing works, we'll get the patent office on the phone because I've got an invention that I just invented. It's a pill you swallow that makes you live forever. I let me rephrase that for the patent office. It's a novel mechanism for extending a person's lifehood for a period of up to and including forever, whereby the imbiber of a small circular powder nub becomes the recipient of an indefinite lifetime extension. Now it's just a matter of waiting for someone to actually create that pill and then the suing can begin. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, you're actually breaking the law. What? How? Uh, I actually own the patent on 10-minute news satire. This is awkward. Look at his little, little breaking face. You can't own telling jokes about the news. Uh, actually, I do. But it was my grandfather that started this whole thing. You see, he invented a novel mechanism of taking mundane current okay, affairs. Okay, okay. You see, it all started back in the 50s. My future fortune was secured by accident. Job. Now let's talk about election news. Well, I'm sure Labour will win come erection time. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I meant election time. What did I? Hmm. Good night. No. Good night. And that was the day satirical news was born with... A dick joke. Yes, I also own the patent on those too. And you know that smiley pointy thing you're going to do at the end of this episode? Oh, you do not own the smile and point. Well, it says so right here in the patent. I also own people saying good night. My man here will be in touch with you shortly. Well, this patent issue is costing companies so much that US President Barack Obama has spoken out against opportunistic lawsuits on patents, or patent trolling, likening it to extortion and saying they're just trying to essentially leverage and hijack somebody else's idea and see if they can extort some money out of them. So you better watch out, patent trollers, because the last time Barack Obama focused his attention on someone this specific, it was Osama bin Laden. We all know how that ended, with Catherine Bigelow getting robbed of an Oscar. And comedian Mark Maron, who hosts the popular podcast WTF says the lawsuits are a risk for podcasters, especially for the people who are working out of their garage or you who are trying to start your podcast. And Marin has good reason to be concerned because he's a pretty high profile target due to his popular interviewing style and unconventional advertising slogans like this one for justcoffee.com. Pow, look out. I just shit my pants. And did you know that here at The Roast we have our own podcast? And we're not even kidding, it's called The Pod Roast. It's on our website. Yeah, we have a website. Has anyone even been there? I feel like we're just screaming into the void. While you're at it, we have Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. But look, Mark Humphreys is the man behind the mic and he joins us now from The Pod Roast Studios. No? Oh, sorry, I understand he joins us now from his garage. And that's all for this week's episode of The Pod Roast. I've been Mark Humphreys. Goodbye.
Oh, Ripper podcast you just missed, Tom. Oh, really? Sorry, Mark. I was just hosting the show you're employed by. Now, how are podcasters reacting to these lawsuits by personal audio? Oh, we're terrified that personal audio are going to hunt us down and squeeze us for some of that sweet patent money. I'm so terrified, I just shit my pants. Oh, God, what was that like? Pow! You know, I don't actually know what answer I was expecting. But Mark, Personal Audio says that amateurs will probably never hear from us because it's just impractical to reach that broad an audience. Amateurs? Interesting. What, you think just because I record the podcast on my laptop in my garage and without pants that I'm an amateur? Tom, it's all well and good to say they won't come after the little guys, but the pod roast is bound to take off. I'll be ripe for suing. And success is a double-edged sword. I imagine. Since Personal Audio has already won $8 million from Apple, there's no telling how much they're going to squeeze me for. So to avoid a lawsuit, I've been trying to get around the traditional definition of podcasting by doing live podcasts at people's homes. I call it Personal Audio. The name of the company that's suing people. You're just asking for a lawsuit. I call it Mark comes to your house and talks about the roast. Well, that's catchy. Yeah, and if transmitting a podcast over the internet is going to get me sued, I'm thinking I'll start doing it on the television. Hello and welcome to the pod roast. I'm Mark. No, not now, Mark. We're still making the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Personal audio have tracked me down for some of that sweet patent money. Mark, dinner. Uh, coming, Mum. All right, well, that's all the time we have. So, good night. <coughs> oh, for